Okay, my friends, it's Roger once again, Mud Fossil University. The cat will be out of the bag. Uno momento. What are we looking at here? Utah Arches National Park. This strap runs down to this ball. There was another ball here. There's balls all over the place that are similar to this. There was a layer here that was right up to there and it eroded. And what was that layer, Roger? That layer was flesh. All right, this is called a tendon mat. These are the fibers that run down to a ball and the ball is locked into flesh or bone or whatever, but it's the anchor. This one's pulled out, that's an injury. That is supposed to be in here. What we just saw at Arches National Park is we saw the fiber coming down to the ball, which would have been in the flesh right up to there. The flesh eroded away and left the ball sort of hanging as we saw. Let's look at it one more time. Don't forget. The, now, now this is the, the mat has just eroded away and the flesh underneath also. So there was some serious amount of, of, of water there at one time. Yeah, absolutely. But all it did was wash away the weakest parts of a biological creature. So let's look again here. There's the strap. There's the ball. The flesh would have been right up to here. The anchor would have been here. It's all eroded away, the, um, um, the, the finger trap basically, but they, all these tendons have a, a fiber, it runs to balls, the balls are implanted, and the fiber stretch. There was another one right here. There's the core of it, it's broken off. That one ran down probably to this ball right here. You can see them. They're all over. There's one here, there's one here. They're not just here and there. They're, they come in batches everywhere. Look at them. Boom, 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 boom. They're everywhere. There's one right there, a gigantic one. And that went back up to this, this stalk that ran down. You can actually see the fibers that ran down, but they break right at that little spot. So this is what we were just looking at, and it's called a, a mat with a tendon, ball, and fiber. This is the emphasis. Let me show you what it looks like in, in um, biology. This is what usually happens. They usually break off right there and leave the ball. In, in that one case where it came down, it's just because of the angle that it's laying on, apparently, as far as I can determine, that it's still stationary. But it's going to collapse at some point. This is a much weaker um, piece of biology than the ball. The ball is just tough as hell. And these are the balls. Some of them come in clusters that are just like a clump like this, like an Achilles heel, and then all the stuff runs out of it. Yes. Then other ones lay flat in, t in muscle and, and uh, things like that, and then they call it also interstitching. They run from your uh, ligaments, tendons, muscle attaches to the ligament and tendon almost at the exact same spot. But they all have these fibers running out of them, and they all have these balls. And the balls are anchors, and they literally are everywhere around the earth, and they are gigantic. So the creatures that were on this earth were just astoundingly gigantic. When I say astoundingly gigantically large, you have no clue. This is what they call the collagen bundle. This is, this is interstitching, and it is just below all of your membranes, your skin, everything. They have these fluid-filled bags. You see this fluid-filled spaces? And then they have these positive lining cells, which are these brown springs. They're really springs. And then they have a ball, which is the anchor of the spring. The collagen can stretch this way and that way. You can move and do all kinds of things because that bag is filled with with fluid and it also is filled with bacteria, which is your good bacteria. It creates, it creates mucus, mucosa, to squirt out of here. It creates serosa. It's, it's beneficial. It has all your transition metals and all that stuff is in there. Now, that can stretch and pull and do all these things. So, here's what happens. When it erodes, if it was a gigantic creature, the balls would remain and everything else would erode into mud. 
And guess what? That's exactly what does happen. And here it is right here. That's the mucosa or skin or whatever it is. And then below it is the red fleshy fluid filled bags anchored with these balls. It's turned into mud now because it's all just eroding away. That's what that's what geology is. It's not what they said at Sicker Point. Let me show you what Sicker Point is. It's all the same stuff, but it was from a heart. Okay, so now back in December of 2015, I did quite clearly show this. This right here and this right here are some type of membranes that are within the heart. There's the red blood part and there's the black blood part. He calls it red sandstone, gray sandstone. Well, that's the two different ventricles of the heart. And here's where they match up together. And I showed this very clearly at that point. And their response was to send out something to say, forget about this guy. Make sure you put this in all the schools. This should be taught at all the levels. All right, this is uh, basically a heart, and this is as uh, the, the relaxation, ventricle relaxation and filling happens here, and then this is just squirting it out through your, your uh, veins and arteries. Now, this is the architecture of it. These are the muscle fibers, totally, completely saturated with fibers, and I will show you a picture that will make it very clear and this is they're somewhere up in here in that sicker point some it's it's in between the the black and the the red he, he calls it gray sandstone red sandstone well it's that's all it is is it's blood that is deoxygenated which is the dark black blood and then the oxygenated blood is the red blood and it turns black in, in mud fossils it's not blue like it is in our body now take your time and think about this. This is literally the fibers that are in the heart which allow it to do all of this. It's, it's continuously doing this 24 hours a day. If it doesn't, you're in trouble. <laughs> now we can see there's a, a lot of places where they come together and there's going to be where the red and the blue match together and then you have all these fibrils running like this. Let's see if we can find that at Sicker Point. And here it is from 2016, just two months later, three months later. Sicker Point, birthplace of modern geology. And that's exactly what they say. Sicker Point is designed to deliver public knowledge and outreach and should be widely used in education at schools and university levels. No comments on this. Here it is right here. This is exactly what I was just showing you. These are all the fibers. And you have the red and the black and even the yellow. The yellow is part of this blood system too because it transfers from oxygenated to deoxygenated. I mean uh, deoxygenated to oxygenated. But there is a place in the middle where it turns yellow. Let me show you that. All right, this is a friend of mine, Phil Harris. He, I, I sent out a thing saying to everybody, you go out and find this stuff in 15 minutes. He goes out and sees this red spot on a rock, smacks it with a hammer, cracks open, it's a heart. <laughs> and this is the red blood. It's still red and blood inside because they, this is called nucleophilic substitution. Internally, it locks in pretty solid. There's the red, there's the gray sandstone, and there's that other yellow stuff that we were just looking at. It's everywhere. It's everywhere, everywhere. And they're small, they're gigantic, they're like Sicker Point, they're like in Utah, Arches National Park. This earth is made of carcasses and creatures. As far as I can determine, that's all that ever existed here was biology. Okay, so again, this is a couple of months after I posted, and I sent this again to everybody in the world trying to get somebody to, to respond and this is what I saw very shortly thereafter. Now I may be giving myself too much credit, they maybe just did that for, you know, it just happened, but it seems quite coincidental. Now we have seen this is biology, it is a heart, and this is the fibers, and these are the colors, and out here somewhere, let's see, somewhere around here. There it is right here. There's a red sandstone, gray sandstone. And these are the, the membranes that separate them. Those are the ventricle walls. And as they go through this whole thing, you can see, I, I understand everything I'm looking at here. And the, the, there's the aorta right there. 
This is the outside of the heart muscle, and these are all the heart muscle fibers that are starting to erode away. And these are the zones between the red and the black and so forth. And, you know, once you, once you understand, you cannot un-understand. And when you look at this stuff, it's just, it's just, it's just what it is. But it's, it, obviously it's eroding. It's like the one I showed you with all those balls laying at the bottom. Everything erodes. But it all started, as far as I could determine from bi biology. I, let me show you some other big ones. They're all over the earth. Once you start to understand and look and really look, it's very, very hard to miss. You see that? That's a mountain, but that is muscle. These are the fibers of muscle. This is not sedimentation, erosion. This is the red, bloody, eroded stuff. The red, fleshy stuff erodes easily. This is what they call loose connective tissue. And the, 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 that connective tissue there is much stronger than the bloody red stuff that was in between. I have a rock here in my shop. Uh, where is it here? This is the exact same thing. You see this? This is right after I took it out of the ground. And, and when you take them for first when they come out, they still have the nice red blood in them. Everything. I have them, actually blood bubbling right out of them. And this is all the fibers. Exact same thing we're just looking at. Exactly identical. And this is a muscle. And this here, right over here, is what they call the abrupt transitions, where the muscles come out and they start to, I mean, where the tendons come out and they start to meet muscles. They have a transition from the, the very, like, there's a, another one right here, and then there's one right here, and then there'll be another one. And that just transitions from the tendon to the muscle to, and that's a transition right there, obviously. And this is the glue that literally glues the tendon into its its anchors, which are the enthesis points and the balls that are inside the muscle. And this is a red bloody layer. Um, I don't know exactly what this muscle was attached to, but they do seem to have these really thick layers of blood. And that's a real thick layer of blood too. Only this is the, the black blood and you know if one side feeds the blood and the other side returns the blood. Virtually everything in your body is like that. Your fingers, your toes, all of those things have blood vessels coming. Well what where do you see this? This is Stonehenge foot. All right, I'm going to show you Stonehenge in a second, but look at the red and the blue on each tip of each toe. This is what happens. I have some here that show this a little better, but that's the best picture I could find anatomically. But on every, this is a, t a fingertip, and this is another fingertip which has not eroded. It's from a giant, and this is DNA certified, 100%. There's no question these are, are, are from a human creature. And I have the hand and everything. I have a palm, the whole palm, three feet wide. Now, the blood comes in. This is a vein. This is the artery. The veins are clamped off. See that? It's, it's there, but you don't, it doesn't leak. It doesn't leak from here. It doesn't leak from out there, but it leaks from the artery side. See that hole? You see that hole? See that hole? These are, there's two holes here and one on the end, and the other one is the artery, the artery and the vein, and then the, the vein side clamps off. So that's what they look like inside. This is actually a distal phalanges pattern, if you could see it. I don't know if it's going to be visible or not. But um, that's, and that, the reason it's black in there is because that's what's called bone black. It, it, it has the marrow. Now this is from the same hand, and this one it did not erode very lightly eroded, but turned completely to mud. And this has been CAT scanned and everything. And you can see the bone up inside of it. And you can see all the arteries and veins and all that. And this is a, a knuckle from that same thing. That's the bone ball of the knuckle. And that's the tendon that runs down to make your fingers do all that kind of stuff. And this side, still on the bone ball, has the muscle. See the muscles? Right. This other side is all eroded off. It was in a kind of a funny position where the hand was, um, well, it's, it was all there. And it's DNA certified and tested, so it's not, there's no big mystery here. Let's get back to these toes. And they're, right now they're having trouble with COVID toe. And it's, the reason is, I believe, is the collagens that are in the body are being attacked, the little springy ones. And then they're, they're not able to get through the blood vessels. And then you get this kind of really nasty toe. 
action going on. That's my take. You see that? That's the hand that came from all these other parts, the fingertips and knuckles and all that stuff. Plus, I have stuff from the other end of them, the toes, and that was like 60 feet down the other way. This is the bumper pad on your hands, the same as like on your hand. If you take your left hand and put it out like that, you've got exactly the same thing. All right, you see the bumper looking stuff? This real silvery looking stuff, that's what's called grip skin. And that grip skin is what is tough as hell on your hands. That's how you can grip things. And, um, and that's what it is. And I have bigger ones than this also DNA certified where you can see the grip skin the fingerprints well let me show you okay I said I had DNA samples tested which I did I extracted them myself I sent them the samples which I extracted I did it cleanly I know exactly how to do it and took all the precautions found it from the red blood supply and it came back as dense DNA in two of the three samples but all three which was that big gigantic fingertip 30 inches long or so a long which is about our size and the mud tip was from that hand and um, they all came back as human DNA and um, two of them were dense it says uh, uh, somewhere and it says it was excellent quality but But anyway, it was, it was, two of them were, were very good quality, where is it? There it is, right here. Excellent quality DNA sequence was obtained for the 36 inch tip, which was the one I had the fingerprints and everything from, and from the lung, using those primers. Uh, and it shows the two different types of primers they used. This was a pretty new procedure at this point in time. They're using PCR, but he stands behind the results. He says, yeah, absolutely, they are human stuff that you sent me. He's not going to stand behind it and say he, he took the proper samples. No, I did the samples. You saw where they came from. If you have a different interpretation of the anatomy of the things that I showed you, well, test them yourself. This was back six years ago. So that's that. And then uh, what else I have here? Oh, yeah. This, was the, this is the only thing I have to show the, the CAT scans because I changed software. and I could probably get them back, but I don't really need them. This, is, this was the, the fingertip, and that's that little apical tuft at the end. And then it, I showed this one here. This is the bone. And you see right here, you see this little emplacement? That's a tendon, and there's a tendon. And they're on the sides of the finger. And that's what, one of them's black. They always have the, the blood on one side and the other kind of blood on the other side. So you have a black, and then you have either a lighter color or a red. This is the bone right here. And uh, you can see the bone if you look really carefully. You see it, but in in this in this type of process, it's called nucleophilic substitution, and what happens is the it gets invaded by whatever the chemistry is. Sometimes it's the chemistry changes things to be basalt. Sometimes they change it into mud. Sometimes they change it into silicates it depends on what's in the water then see they scan right through it this was a very very high quality and i had seven cat scans done and it was done by a, one of the best people in the world they still are jesse garant and associates these are the blood vessels and it's coming up through to show what is inside there you, again it's very hard to see this you have to look very carefully to see what was inside there because it's going to change just a tad but a lot of rocks you find they look pretty much similar inside as they do on the outside because they have been transformed into what's called nucleophilic substitution brings in whatever is in the watery solutions and salty environment makes it 
sort of bond with whatever is there, and most of it sort of starts to take on a a look you know, that it pretty much looks like mud and dirt and black and this and that. But that's a bone. That's the head of a bone. So it's time to take take you know, and and they would say, oh no no no, that couldn't be a bone. It's supposed to be white. No, turn, they can turn to stone. No problem whatsoever. Anything there is can turn to stone, basically, from nucleophilic substitution. Same thing with with uh, trees. It depends on the conditions they were they were entombed in. This is not really a big mystery anymore. It really isn't. It's very hard to accept this, or, or after many many years of trying to present this evidence and having it undeniable, and have it denied. This one also DNA certified. There's the fingernail. There's a little bumper pad on the finger that that goes to the next one. There's the blood supplies coming in. And not only is this side perfect, I broke off a piece of the fingerprints right there on the other side. And the fingerprints are so perfect that you can see the ridges in them and see the sweat pores. My finger is as wide as one of those, those ridges, fingerprint ridges. And this peels off it's just exactly like it's shown here. When I smashed it, it just peeled right off like a, a like it was pasted on there. I mean, it just, it just came right off just like that. Underneath this thing, well, hold on, I have it right here. Hold on. Somewhere here. Uh, here it is right here. It was... This is it right here, you see it? And I took a, a sledgehammer and just bashed it, and it just popped right off. And you see that? That was what this layer is right here. And it fractured, and we're up inside the skin up in here. And I can look in here and see red blood vessels. Now, I went up inside the... Um, well, you know, it was turned over the other way, but I went down into the red fleshy area and into a vein, I mean an artery, and got red blood. I sent that off. I took the extractions. I sent them samples from these anatomical parts. I know where they were. I know where the blood vessels are. I know where the arteries and veins are. And that's what I sent them was artery blood. And two of them came out dense. One of them was... Uh, this lung right here, that had, well, you can see it, dense blood. I took it, I drilled up in here inside and got clean, fresh red blood out of there. Blood, not just swab something off the surface. This is what kills me about these geologists. Oh, you must have contaminated it. This can't be right. Well, you can see the damn thing is anatomically exactly perfect. Secondly, DNA certification says absolutely correct. Thirdly, CAT scans show the anatomical features are, 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 are present internal as well as external. So this is, the case is closed on this, and the sizes are so enormous, as you just saw, that if anybody can find me something on the earth that wasn't, I mean, there's sedimentation, yes, absolutely. The mud runs off, no question whatsoever. There's lava flows, yes. Lava flows, in my mind, are not just for no reason flowing out lava. That is decomposition deep in the earth of some biological material that is so festering that eventually it explodes. Just like a compost, spontaneous combustion basically. All right, that's this fingertip right here. That's the CAT scan. Uh, and the surface, you can get a lot of good detail. You see, that's where the fingernail ran, right around there. and. You can see uh, the dark and the light colors, as I saw, I showed you before. It's time to confront your professors and teachers and everybody that you know, and just say we're, we're not we're not in reality anymore. We need to re-examine our origins. Start from there, or just walk around in circles. It's up to you at this point. I, I'm done with the circles. All right. If you want to really get informed about what our history was. Read Velikovsky.
I wrote this book, Mud, Mud Fossils, Velikovsky, Minds in Collision. He wrote Worlds in Collision. And we had a catastrophic event here on Earth 3,500 years ago, recorded in every single culture on Earth. They destroyed Velikovsky. And I am still fighting today with some of the top physicists in the world that just say, oh, he was insane, he, there was no proof of anything. Well, they won't look at anything, so there's no proof of anything that they'll ever accept. I, I tried to do this for free. I don't know, maybe it is free, but it says 99 cents. But anyway, read for free, I don't know. Um, but this, is, Velikovsky was the guy, he's my hero. And they destroyed him, and that, that's why people don't even know his name now. But now, I have the evidence that supports every word I'm saying. He had the ancient scripts and so forth, which everybody laughs at. They still laugh at. Well, I have physical things in my hand that I can show, which I have shown. And now it's time that the cat is out of the bag. And let's see who steps up. Who's your teachers? Present this to your professors. Present this to your teachers. Talk to your parents. Talk to your kids. Ask them, what do you think? Don't walk around in circles for your whole life. Play somebody else's game. That's, that's not the way I do things.